Hey guys, and welcome back to Crouton Cracker Jacks. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make one of the most comforting of all comfort food recipes of all time, chicken pot pie. This recipe is so delicious, takes a little bit of time to make, but nothing is complicated at all. It's super easy to make. It uses leftover chicken, some vegetables, and it's all in a creamy chicken gravy stuffed in a flaky pie crust, baked until it's nice and golden brown. It is the true definition of pure comfort food. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, like I said, this recipe uses leftover chicken. So I've got half a chicken here that is leftover from the night before dinner. Uh, it's just a spatchcocked, roasted, seasoned chicken. And I'm gonna break this down into pieces, take the skin off, and I'm going to chunk up the meat. Now, if you don't have a leftover chicken, no worries. Uh, you can use a split chicken breast and a chicken quarter. If you just want all white meat, you can use two breasts, that's perfectly fine. If you prefer dark meat, just use a couple of thighs and drumsticks. Uh, you can either roast those up, you could braise them, you could boil them. If you have a rotisserie chicken, you could use one of those, that's perfectly fine. But you wanna cook your chicken however you prefer to cook your chicken and then you want to chunk it or shred it into pieces. All in all, it's about a pound, pound and a half of chicken. You, there's no real exact precise measurement here. Now, once you get all your chicken shredded, you will have a nice sizable pile of shredded chicken. Uh, if you're doing this off the bone, you'll have some skin and bones left over. You can discard those if you'd like to, or since we will be using chicken broth for the gravy for this, you can put it into a pan with a few cups of water and boil that for about an hour have a nice homemade broth that you can use, then use in the gravy. But I'm not gonna worry about that, I'm gonna use canned broth. So yeah, set the chicken off to the side until we need it later. Now we're also going to need a potato for our chicken pot pie. I like pot pies with potato in it. Uh, some people may not, so if you don't like potato in your pot pie, you can leave this out. Uh, this is just a medium baking potato. It is a russet potato. You could use whatever kind of potato you like. I'm just cutting this into about half inch size pieces. And potatoes are great in pot pie because it acts as a filler. Uh, it just kind of bulks up the pie, makes a little bit more hearty, and kind of stretches the filling, if you will. Now, once you get your potato cut up, you can go ahead and add that to a pan. And you wanna add just enough cold water to cover your potatoes. Now, you wanna bring this up to a boil. I am doing this in the pan that I'm gonna make the filling in anyway. So this may seem like you know a rather large pot to be doing this in, but it's just for convenience sake so I don't dirty another pan. Now once that water comes up to a boil, you wanna boil your potatoes for about five minutes or so, just until they are fork tender. You don't, you're not gonna be mashing these potatoes, so you, know, you want them to remain whole in your pot pie. So don't cook them any longer than you have to. I found for the size that I cut my potatoes into, five minutes works to be perfect. But once your five minutes is up, you want to drain your potatoes and again, put them into a bowl and set them off to the side until you need them for later. Now to make up the gravy. I'm using the same pot that I used for my potatoes and I'm going to melt in a stick of butter. Now this is over medium high heat and I'm gonna melt down this butter or start melting it down. And I'm using a full stick here. You can get by with half a stick if you want to. Your gravy won't be as thick and as creamy. Uh, so your pot pie will be a little bit runny. Uh, when you don't use as much butter, but you can cut the butter in half, that's perfectly fine. And to that, I'm going to add in half of a medium-sized yellow onion that I have chopped up. Now I'm gonna cook this onion over medium-high heat, uh, let that butter melt, just until that onion is translucent. You don't wanna brown your butter. If your butter starts browning, turn the heat down. You have the heat way too high. Uh, you just wanna saute your onions here, let them get nice and soft, and cook off that bite to them. Uh, once they get translucent, you wanna add in half a cup of all-purpose flour, and you wanna mix this well. You are creating a roux here, uh, as they call it. This is what's gonna thicken our gravy. So I've still got the heat over medium-high, and I'm stirring this well. You wanna cook this roux for about 30 seconds or so, just to cook off the raw flavor of the flour. And then you wanna slowly start adding in two cups of chicken broth. Now, like I said before, you can make your own homemade broth with the bones left over from the chicken. I'm just using a can of chicken broth for convenience sake, uh, but you wanna slowly add in this two cups or one can of chicken broth as you are constantly stirring. You need to constantly stir this and add the chicken broth slow so you don't get lumps in your gravy. When you get that mixed in, you wanna add in one cup of whole milk. I like using whole milk, you know, use whatever kind of milk that you have. And again, slowly start stirring this in. 
Now while you're waiting for your gravy to come up to a boil, you can go ahead and season it. I'm going to use one teaspoon of seasoned salt. The recipe for that will be in the description below. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of dried thyme leaf. And I'm just gonna stir that in. And you wanna cook your gravy just until it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, your gravy is gonna be as thick as it's gonna get. So there's no purpose in you know continuing to cook it. So once it comes up to a boil, you can go ahead and shut the heat off. And now we can add in the rest of our ingredients, which is the shredded chicken, as well as the potato that we cooked up earlier. And I'm also going to add in one and a half cups of frozen peas and carrots. Now these peas and carrots don't have to be cooked. You know, just stirring them into the hot gravy is enough to cook them. And I'm gonna slowly start stirring this together. Now you wanna be careful here so you don't end up making mashed potatoes with your potatoes if by chance you happen to cook them a little too long. Uh, so just gently fold this mixture together until everything is coated with that delicious gravy. And that's all there is to making the filling. It's super simple. Uh, if you don't want to go the whole route of making a pot pie and using, you know, putting this into a pie shell, uh, put this into a casserole dish and cover it with one of those cardboard cans of biscuits and make pot pie that way. Uh, but I'm going to go all the way and actually make a pie crust for this. Now for the pie crust. I made a double recipe of my pie crust. I have a separate video that shows how I make that. I will link to that down below in the description box. I'm just gonna sprinkle some bench flour out onto my countertop. And since this is a double recipe, since we're doing both a top and bottom crust, um, I'm gonna divide this into two. One side, one portion, a little bit larger than the other. The small piece, I'm just gonna roll into a ball and set that off to the side. That will eventually become our top crust. Uh, this larger portion, we wanna roll that out until it fits into the cake pan that we're gonna use uh, to make this chicken pot pie. You wanna flour your rolling pin as well and start rolling out your pie crust. Now, while I'm rolling this out, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the pie dish that I'm using here is actually a nine inch cake plate um, or a cake pan, if you will. If you use a traditional nine inch uh, pie plate for this, you're gonna to have to divide the filling between two because this makes so much filling, um, which means that then you will have to make four pie crusts for this. Uh, so use a nine inch cake plate for this pot pie. And you just wanna roll your dough out until it's about two inches larger all the way around than the pan that you are using for this. You wanna transfer your dough into your pie plate and you wanna get this centered and you wanna get your dough down into the corners of your pie plate or pie pan, cake pan that you're using. Make sure that you don't have any air bubbles underneath your dough uh, that can cause problems later on when you go to bake this. So make sure that your dough is in all the corners and you have a nice overlap all around the edges here. Then you wanna transfer your pot pie filling into your cake plate. Just get it all in there and then mash it down until it's nice and even on top. Try not to get it on the pie crust edges because that will prevent a good seal from happening and that's a chance for uh, the gravy to weep out as you bake this. And then we can roll out the top crust. Again, just roll it out on your counter, making sure that your rolling pin and counter are well floured so it doesn't stick. And once it's about as big as the actual surface, the top of your pie plate, you can just go ahead and transfer it. And now we can seal up the edges. Now to seal this to make sure that none of our filling leaks out, uh, basically what you're gonna wanna do is take your bottom crust edge and roll it up and over the top crust edge. You just wanna encase that top crust in the bottom crust, and then you wanna kinda of press down and make like a, a lip around the inside of the pie. So if this does happen to you know start leaking, it will actually keep itself contained in that little rim that you're creating there. Now before you bake this, you wanna give it a nice egg wash. Uh, egg wash is just one egg as well as a teaspoon of water that's been whisked together in a small bowl. And then using a pastry brush, I'm just gonna brush this egg mixture right over the top. This is gonna make sure that our pot pie is nice and golden brown on top. It also kind of seals the crust around the top also. So, you know, again, the filling doesn't weep out during the baking process. Uh, before we bake this, you wanna cut some vent holes. Just using a little paring knife, just cut four holes in the top uh, and make sure that those are spread open. So as this bakes, they don't seal themselves shut. Uh, this is for the steam to escape as this bakes. Then you wanna bake this in a preheated 375 degree oven for between 45 and 60 minutes. It's gonna have to depend on your oven, how long you bake this. You wanna bake it until it is nicely golden brown. And then you wanna take this out of the oven and let it rest for about 10 minutes before you cut into it. 
and then you can serve it up. And there you go. That's how you make the most comforting of all comfort food recipes, homemade chicken pot pie. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. If you do, let me know how you like it down in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe for more deliciousness and to keep up to date on all my latest videos. I'm also now on Instagram officially. You can find a link to that in the description box below. So follow me there. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.